Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Armory 3D Game Engine tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about audio. Uh, that is playing sound effect and music inside of your Armory powered game. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, as always, there is an ongoing uh, tutorial series available uh, here on Dev Game. It's the sound and music chapter we're going to go through today. So again, I will link that down below. Uh, there's a full series here and there should be some new text tutorials coming online shortly. For every text tutorial, there is a corresponding video tutorial like the one you're watching watching right now. All right, so let's head on over to our uh, Armory slash Blender install. Uh, I've already gone through the prerequisites, so I've saved it to a folder, I've switched to Cycles Renderer, and I've done a build. The next thing we need to do is get some audio files into our project. Now, there's a couple of steps involved here. First off, we're going to actually have to copy those files into the project. So open up your project folder that's available here under Armory Project, and then you will find it right there. Click the project folder, and it will open up Explorer or Finder or your local file system viewer with the corresponding directory open. Now what you wanna do, so you can see here, I've already done a build once, uh, but you wanna add a folder to this directory. So just create a new folder in it, and the folder is called bundled. And this is where you're gonna put your additional game resources. In this particular case, our audio files. Now we need an audio file of some form to work with. And there's two major formats I recommend. Now there's a couple of different ones supported by the CAW system underneath, and a lot of it depends on the platform that you're choosing to run on. Uh, but OGG or Og Vorbis and uh, Wave are probably the two most commonly used. Now, OGG is an open source alternative to such as MP3 or MP4. It is a compressed file format and it's ideal for long form stuff. So things like uh, dialogue or background music, whereas Wave is a shorter, um, much easier to load format, but takes up a lot more space. And it's most commonly used for special effects. In this particular case, that's all we're gonna actually work with. So in this bundled directory, we need a special effect to drop into it. I have have one right here called soundeffect.wave. Just drop it in there. So obviously, just put whatever wave file you want in there. If you go to the tutorial, I've linked to two websites that are used for making special effects. You do need um, the Flash Player installed to work with either, unfortunately. Or you can go to a website like freesound.org, which has tons of sounds available to you. All right, with that done, we now have it bundled in, and we can approach this one of two ways. We can either add an armory trait and play this with hacks, which is what we'll do first, and then of course we'll show the node-based way of doing things as well. So let's start off with the hacks way. So with something selected, go on in here and basically we're just gonna attach an armory trait to something. It could be an empty node in the scene. I'm gonna stick with the default cube. So create a new trait, create hack script, create a new script like so. So now we have a new trait set up. Do a quick save right there just in case. And now we'll edit our script. And of course this will open up Code Studio. Let it do its quick initialization so that we've got the, um, the code completion stuff done. And almost there, all right, we are done and off to the races. Now let me just get some more room so you can see this a bit better. So here is our project. Now all we're really going to do in this particular case is load and play a sound effect. So um, now that we've got our code in, we're just gonna do our notify on update. That doesn't make sense. Oh, okay, that's how I did it. All right, so in here, notify on update. Let's uncom, oh no, sorry, wrong one. On update. So let's uncomment that guy. And all we're gonna do is if the player presses the S key, we're gonna go ahead and play our sound effect. Pretty straightforward, so if iron.system.input, so we already covered this in the input category. So head on back over there if you need an update of what we're doing. We're just gonna to check to see if the S key is currently down. Like so. And if it is, oops, wrong one we are going to run the following code. Iron, the data. So we're getting, we're accessing the data from our game using iron data. I think that's the first time we've accessed data so far. There is a class here called data, and you can use it for getting all the various kinds of data from your uh, game. So a lot of these you can see are uh, blender types, etc. But in this case, we're actually doing git sound. We get it by name. Uh, I think I called it sound effect.wave, but I'm gonna make sure so that we don't have to revisit this later. Yep, sound effect.wave. So just put the file name in there like so. And then we're gonna, the, the second parameter we pass in is actually a callback function that's gonna be called when this is done loading. So once our sound effect is available and working, we call this function. So function, and then it takes a type of sound. It's a call.sound. So. 
And then in the event that we are done loading our sound, we are going to go ahead and play it. So playing the sound is as simple as iron.system.audio. So you're seeing iron is the interface between game data as well as game interfaces, code logic stuff. Um, and then once we've got audio, we'll go ahead and do a play and we'll play our sound like so. So this really should be all that is required. Uh, I called it sound. Why are you not liking that? Oh, I think I got one too many parentheses here. All right, so we're inside our callback function. We're end of it. Yeah, we got too many parentheses going on here. No, no, that's right. If there, click there. So we need to close off our second function. So our closed off function there, close off our function there, semicolon. All right. So that basically, all we've done here is we hit the S key, we go and get it, get a reference to our sound file, and then when our sound file is done loading, this inline function will be called. Uh, what we do here is pass in the sound file now that it's loaded, and then we simply play it calling audio.play. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and see if this actually worked. Hit F5 and do our build. And here we go. So our code is loaded. Here we are, and if I hit S, I don't know if my sound is not turned up. Let me check. All right, one second. Okay, I had to do some creative editing because that was way too loud. But anyways, when I hit the S key, and each time I hit, we're playing the same sound effect over and over again. Now again, you can get away with that with a WAV file, quick and fast loading type thing. But if you start doing that with a three, four, five megabyte AUG file, it may not be the happiest player in the world. So that's why you're gonna come down, wanna choose between the two different formats. But you see, pretty simple to play sound effects and we can get multiple versions going with no problem at all. So now let's go back over and look at things from the node side of things. Process is quite similar, um, but there's a couple of extra steps. So now that we've actually, we've copied that into our bundled folder, we also have to make um, Blender aware of it. And even if you're using Blender quite often, you probably don't do what we're about to do very commonly. So come on up here to your um, outliner and see how you've got all scenes up here. What you wanna actually do is switch this over to data blocks like so. So now this is actually looking at all of the data that's included in your blend file. And there's a category down here of type sounds. And you'll notice it is currently quite empty. So what we wanna do is add a sound in there. In Blender, somewhere in the, the user interface over here, hit like so, and we want it to add sound. Add sound, I thought. It was, one second. Oops, my bad. Open sound, like so. And we go ahead, click that command. And now you go into your bundled folder and click sound effect.wave. And there you will now see you have it bundled in and included right there. Now with this guy selected, however, we want to expand into it and we want to toggle fake user on. That way it gets, um, included for sure in part of our armory build. And now we're ready to go with it. So now that we have that sound effect defined and named, you can change the name of it right there if you want to give it a different name. And again, make sure you set that fake user so armory can see it and it gets included. Uh, we're now gonna go ahead and set up our notes. So let's break out this guy right here. We'll go back over to here for now and get rid of our hacks trait. So just get rid of that, get rid of that. So we're gonna add a new node trait on this guy. So let's switch here into the node viewer. Node editor like so, into the game mode. And we will go ahead and add a new, okay, audio player, like so. And add in a root node. And we'll just do this one the same thing. When we press a keyboard, we're gonna play the sound. So go in here and we'll add a input on keyboard, like so. And we'll do it as, uh, let's see, what did I do in the tutorial T? I don't know why I did T, but we'll do the T on T released and playing sound is incredibly simple. We just come in here, go to add sound and you can play sound. We'll see play speaker in a second, but we'll do play sound like so. Click that here, you've got your sound effect. Now, if you didn't go through this whole process earlier with the data block, that guy won't show up, which is why we did this and added the fake user there. 
All right, well, before I can run this, obviously I need to attach my trait. So come in here, press the plus key, switch over to node, select our new audio player node. And I think we are good to go. Let's switch back over here and play. So dun, 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 there we go, hit the T key. And there is our sound effect. Now, pretty straightforward, pretty easy stuff. Um, now let's actually just go through and show you how to use that speaker option. Let's switch data blocks back to all scene right here. I'm gonna create a new object in our 3D scene. So we're actually gonna get rid of all of this. So hit A twice and there, go ahead and delete it. So with our guy selected right here, let's go ahead and go add. And then you'll notice there's an option up here for speaker. We can actually put the, the sound into the 3D world. So we could add it right there in that location. And this enables you to put your sound effects directly into the 3D scene. So what we can do now is go into the properties with the speaker selected, and you'll notice we have a couple of options here. We go on back to the very top. Okay, where did it go? Properties. Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry, I don't want properties. I want to go to the speaker icon right there. And then we're just going to go ahead, drop down this guy, and select our sound effect. And that sound effect is going to be hooked up to the speaker. And you see you've got various different parameters here. For some reason, maximum is disabled. Uh, so basically, you can't control the fall off of your sound. But it allows you to place your sound in 3D space. And then to play this guy is quite simple. So we'll just go ahead and back here. We'll go straight again. We'll do it with the um, keyboard again. So on keyboard... I'll go over to space, that's fine. So we'll do on release space. And then what you wanna play a speaker instead, you just go add and then sound play speaker. So, and then the only property you have left is basically you select your speaker from the scene and then running that. So let this load up and then spacebar plays the sound. Now, I'm not sure how advanced the underlying sound technology is. Cause um, music, multi, like cross-platform music functionality is pretty limited. So I don't know how well you can actually integrate this. I think this is more of a feature, future functionality. So I don't know that you get a lot more out of it from being a speaker as opposed to playing it the other way around. But I think in the future you might. So hopefully in the future we get some more 3D integration, 3D sound. But as I said, the CAW functionality for playing sound is very, very, very primitive. So if advanced functionality is added in the future, I will definitely revisit this topic. And that's it for now. Pretty straightforward one. So we saw how to play sound using both setups or using the speaker setting. Uh, the thing that's probably going to trip the most people up is getting your sound data in. So once you've got that done, you're good to go. Quick recap. Do remember, you've got to create that bundled folder inside of your project. Add your sound files to it. Wave, Aug, Vormis, or possibly MP4 on certain platforms. Um, and then, you know, we saw how to do playback in code and in notes. It's both quite simple. So uh, that's a bit for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.